Measurements come in all different sizes, which is handy. Invented in 1928 as a way to decorate tape measures, measurements are regularly used these days to work out how far away from the car next door you've parked, how far you can kick something, and the length of body parts. Measurements are generally either standard or non-standard. Non-standard measurements are useful if you want to get a rough idea of something, such as describing the burger that you had for lunch as being as big as a house. Or when you pace about your front room, trying to work out if the TV you've just bought will fit. It will, by the way. Standard measurements, however, are perfect when you want to be that little bit more accurate. In the UK, we're cursed with two types of measurements, imperial and metric. Imperial measurements include weight, such as pounds, ounces and stone, and distances like inches, feet and miles. Metric measurements include weight, such as milligrams, grams and kilograms, and distances like millimetres, centimetres, metres and kilometres. But why do both these measurements exist? Well, imperial measurements go back to 1826, when the Weights and Measures Act came into effect throughout the British Empire. The metric system was introduced in France way back in 1799, and has become the official system of measurement in pretty much every industrialised country, with the exception of the USA. These days, if you buy something in a shop, then the metric system is generally the measurement system of choice unless you buy a pint, which is imperial. Because the metric system breaks everything down into equal units of 10, 100 and 1000, it's generally easier to work out. Take distance, for example. A millimetre is roughly the width of a needle. 10 of these make up a centimetre, about the same as the width of a fingernail. 100 centimetres go into a metre, and 1000 metres go into a kilometre and metric measurements are linked to one another too. When you look at volume of liquid, 1,000 cubic centimetres is the same as 1,000 millilitres, or one litre. Here's a summary of the key metric measurements that you need to know. Sometimes you need to convert measurements. For example, you might measure a piece of wood in centimetres and then need to buy some screws that are measured in millimetres. Because each centimetre is equal to 10 millimetres, you can work this out by taking the length in centimetres and multiplying it by 10 to get your answer in millimetres. Try and work this out. Let's say that you are measured by the doctor and they tell you that your height is 183 centimetres. What's that in metres? Remember, there are 100 centimetres in a metre. That means that you need to divide 183 by 100 to get your answer. Well done if you got it. And so to recap. Common standard measurements come in two flavours, imperial and metric. Metric is the main measurement used in most countries throughout the world and measures distances in millimetres, centimetres, metres and kilometres, weight in milligrams, grams and kilograms, and liquids in millilitres, centilitres and litres. And yet imperial measurements are still used for certain things. After all, saying that you're off for a brisk 1.6093 kilometre walk to the pub for a cheeky 568.261 millilitres just doesn't sound quite right. <laughs>